Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my tutorial on Bayesian analysis and introduction. Uh, now, before I start this tutorial, I should let you know that we will be looking at some distributions. So I'm going to assume that you know what a Gaussian distribution is, what a gamma distribution is, um, and be familiar with the basic Bayes rule, right? So uh, those things I'm going to assume. So if you, if you don't know those ones, I think, I think you need to uh, uh, step out of this tutorial because it might be a lot. But regardless, um, I am going to focus on doing things the Pythonic or rather the PyMC3 way of doing things. And the maths, yes, I, I will show you some maths, but uh, again, uh, try to go to the, end of, to the end of the tutorial where I will show you how it's done using PyMC3 and you might go, hey, wow, I really don't need to know the maths to be, to be doing Bayesian analysis. Okay, all right, so let's get started. Um, so the problem that I have is um, I have a, a set of observations, okay, so I'm gonna call them X. Um, and what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and estimate the mean, right? So now obviously you're thinking, okay, the, 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 that's fairly easy, I can just, just simply sum them up and divide by N, I will get the mean. But no, um, I want to do this the Bayesian way. So not only do I want to get an estimate of the mean, I want to get I want to get an idea of how uh, how much it varies as well. Okay, so um, all right. So let, let's let's just get started with the example so you understand what I'm talking about. All right. So I'm, I'm going to tell you that the, the the true mean. Let me just zoom in. All right. So that the true mean is going to be four. Uh, which I don't know, which I'm uh, going to estimate. And the observations uh, have a standard deviation of one. Now I'm telling you that the standard deviation is one. Okay, so um, for the problem, you, you can assume that. So the, way, the Bayesian way of doing this is to get the posterior of the mean given the data. Okay, so the posterior of the mean mu given x is going to be, we're just going to be using the Bayes rule, right? Now you can use the simplified version of it to say it's proportional to, right? So this is simply, uh, should be coming from your high school maths where you go switch the two. So if it's mu given x, x given mu, multiply by the prior. Okay, so this thing is called the prior. This thing is called the likelihood, all right? Uh, let's see that. Um, yeah, so a, a better way to, to do this is to look at this equation instead, all right? So the posterior, um, okay, so actually, let's let, let me let me come up with an notation before I move on. So sorry about stopping. So this thing over here is called the posterior. Okay, so what, what is what is the uh, distribution of my uh, variable that I'm looking at? So in this case, the mean given my data. Okay, so that's called posterior. It's always going to be proportional to the likelihood times the prior. All right, so the prior is something that we assume um, that the the the, the, the variable has. A distribution of okay, it, it can be um, it can be Gaussian, it can be exponential, wh whatever it's going to be. Generally, what you do is you you say that the prior is very wide, right? So basically, you're saying I really don't know anything about uh, this variable, so I'm going to assume it's going to be as wide as possible to capture all possible values. Um, so what's going to happen, you'll see soon, is that the prior will start making sense. Okay, now bear with me. I, I know this, this this is a bit of maths, but uh, as soon once you get past this bit, things are going to get a lot easier. All right. So what I'm what I want to find is the the posterior of mu given all my observations of n. Um, I've already told like I, I, okay, I forgot to mention that the likelihood. So I'm going to assume that it's a it's a normal distribution centered around mu, and because I know that the standard deviation is one, you divide by one. Okay, so that's, which I haven't really shown up here because it doesn't really make sense. Um, now for the mean, the prior, I'm going to assume that the mean is centered around zero and it has a variance of 20. Okay, so 20 is, is a fairly large variance, right? Now, and uh, like the, the true mean is four, but we haven't observed that, okay? So basically you can work through the maps and then uh, you end up saying that the posterior is this thing. You don't have to go through this. Uh, I promise you this is, this is quite right, but uh, one thing important to note is see over here how it goes sum of x divided by n. That's the usual estimate that you get, right? But 
the mean has this extra component plus one on 20 squared. So it's quite a small value, but that comes thanks to this value over here, right? And the same, same thing, uh, so there's, there's a variance component over here. All right, so, okay, so when we look at the prior distribution, that's what it is, it's quite a wide distribution. Um, actually, one thing I for, did forget to do is look at the uh, distribution of the data. So, uh, if I look at the distribution on X on its own, actually, that's why I haven't looked at it. I haven't got to that point yet. All right. So, okay. So, what I, what I really want to show is how the 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 mean and the variance change as we observe uh, more and more. Uh, values of x. Okay, so if I was to, um, sorry, I'm running this on Google Colab as you, as you can see. Um, yeah, so when I run through this, so in the beginning, it's it's quite a the the posterior on the on on my mean is quite wide. Okay, so the values are varying between zero and five. Okay, so I know that the true mean is four, but you'll see as as I go along, the further I go along, the mean is starting to converge around four. And just one thing that I really want you to focus on is how the variance changes, All right? So this is, a, this is quite a wide distribution, but it starts to get narrower and narrower the more observations that we get. Okay, so in the end, well, it's, it's kind of, it doesn't really go too much further, but yeah, the point is, it's starting to get thinner and thinner. Okay, so the more observations that get. And that's all thanks to this equation up here. Okay, so you can see that uh, the the mean the mean of the mean, right? So re really get that into your head. So the mean of the mean is starting to converge onto four. The more observations that we get, and this thing over here, the more observations that get, uh, it's the the variance is, is really narrowing down to um, it's going to get screamed, uh, squeezed down to zero. Okay, so that is the mathematical way of doing things. So this is really what, where I wanted you to uh, get to. So now we're gonna do with the PIMC three way. All right, so the PIMC three way, all you really had to do is you had to specify how the data is generated. So you need to set, set your priors and your likelihood. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so like I, I told you the prior that I have on my mean is uh, the normal distribution 0 to 20. And you go with PM dot model as model. Okay, so that's how we always start a, a PIMC three model you write this thing down, okay? So mu is pm.null. Now, if you don't know how to write the symbol, don't worry about it, just just write mu. That, that's really not part of the, the tutorial. Uh, but anyway, that's that's a pretty cool part of uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So you go pm.normal, and then you had to rename it mu for some odd reason, so let's ignore that. Um, now the standard deviation, uh, sigma mu, I'm pretty sure I, I set that to 20 somewhere. Okay, like, okay, just, just take it as it is that, that, that I'm telling you right now that um, this, is, this is a simple value of 20, all right? The standard deviation is 20, and then my likelihood is going to be uh, mean of mu and standard deviation of 1, okay? So some magic always telling you that standard deviation is 1. Usually you don't know, but let's just go with it for now. And, and that's it. That's, that's your model, all right? Now, uh, being Bayesian, what you do want to do is you want to sample them. And that's really easy. You just go trace is pm.sample, um, n jobs equals four. That's, that's talking about how to parallelize this task, right? So uh, what you will end up with in this case is 500 times four samples, right? So I've, I've already run this. Um, it samples 1,200 draws per second, right? And when I plot it, it'll draw, unfortunately, uh, for some reason, it, it draws all those four, four lines separately. So the four, um, four jobs that it has, it, it draws them separately. And then, yeah, so you get this histogram, right? So if you want to see how it fluctuates, you can, you can look at this. Uh, but main point is the mean of mu is centered around four, which is exactly what we wanted, right? So which is great. Um, yeah, and if you, if you wanted to look at the, the, if you wanted to get those numbers, what you go, got to go is trace and mu. Okay, so in this case, it's 2000. So, Remember how I, as I told you that there was a magic orb that, that told you that the uh, standard deviation is one? Right now, you don't have to settle for that, right? So you can say, okay, I, I really don't know what the standard deviation of my uh, data is. And you can go ahead and estimate that, that as well. Okay, so you can, you can end up getting a distribution. 
So in this case, what I'm telling you is the mean again, it's, it's a wide prior. Um, but this time I'm going to have a prior on sigma as well. Okay, so y will, will be distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. All right, so I'm not telling you it's, it's one anymore. So uh, again, those three lines, that's how I do it. And then to get the posterior, all you had to do is go trace is equal to PM dot sample. Okay, so in this case, I've, I've again asked for 500 samples. Uh, so uh, a little bit slower this time, but th that's fine. Um, so anyway, so we, we see the mean of me being near, near four, but great thing is that the standard deviation to the sigma is also close to one, okay, which is what the true uh, data set was. So that that is it for this tutorial. All right, so this is very much an introduction to uh, Bayesian uh, analysis. So basically how to get the, the posterior, the uh, pi MC three way rather than having to, having to force yourself to use maths to figure it out, right? So uh, again, just to reiterate, if I went back to the maths, I, had to, I would have had to work all this out. And it would have been even more complicated if I tried to um, try to work out the posterior for sigma given the, given the data. Okay, so um, yeah, so pi MC three really makes things easier. And and just if you if you're already aware of Bayesian uh, analysis, note notice how I didn't um, how I didn't mention anything about the sampling method, right? So I didn't say, say tell you it was uh, GIP sampling. I didn't tell you it was having uh, Hamiltonian, uh, no, not not HMC, uh, Metropolis sampling. There are there there's a whole variety, but uh, if you don't tell it. Um, uh, PIMC3 will choose this method called no Uton sampling, so nuts, which is the same thing that Stan uses if, you, if you're aware of the baggage. Anyway, I'm going off in a, in a tangent. So that's it for the introduction to Bayesian learning. Uh, next time I will come up with a uh, Bayesian deep networks uh, tutorial, right? Uh, but that's it for this one. If you liked it, please let me know uh, if you would like to continue learning more about Bayesian uh, statistics. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching, and please, please do subscribe.